Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis, and I'm delighted to be joined by Frida Payne and Richard Allen Williams, Dr. Richard Allen Williams. We want to just jump right into the music and find out, Frida, how did you get inspired and interested in even starting in music? So the first time I sang in front of a real audience at, the, at a recital was a song called Stars Are the Windows of Heaven. Wow. Okay, pretty mature song for no, someone. No, so Stars yeah. Are the Windows of Heaven <laughs> is like a adolescent type okay. song. Okay. You, know, <laughs> you know, like, stars are the windows of heaven where angels peek through. Up in the sky, they keep an eye on kids like me and you. <laughs> so anyway, after that, my mother's friends, after the recital, they all gathered around and said, oh, Frida, you have a great voice. Why don't you sing at our banquet? Why don't you do this? So finally, I start doing that. And then I entered, I, got, I start entering talent contests in and around Detroit. Sometimes I would win first place. Sometimes I would come in second. So anyway, I decided to uh, audition for a TV show. It was called Ed McKenzie's Dance Hour okay. in Detroit, and it came on every Saturday. It was uh, just like it was Detroit's version of Dick Clark's American mm -hmm. Bandstand. Okay. Sure. So he had teenagers dancing and pop music. These were all the, the little white kids, you know. Right. And then if there was a big star performing at one of the nightclubs at, in Detroit, like the Rooster Tail or the Flame Show Bar, uh, they would be uh, the guest, the star guest on the show. And then they had a segment where they had a talent contest. Right. And it was only four people. And they would have four acts. And that, that was every Saturday. So I auditioned for it. And um, I sang. And I won. I won the talent contest. And then they called me back six months later. And I won again. So anyway, that was how it all started. And then I, I uh, auditioned for a radio show. Okay. In, uh, that that was on station WJR. It was uh, it came it emanated from the Fisher Building in mm -hmm. Detroit up in the penthouse, and they had a band, a big band, and this was like a group, a choir, and you had to audition. You had to be a good sight reader. So I had right. learned had back then they had music courses in the public schools. Right. So I had learned how to sight read. Uh, during that time when I was four, it was I was 14. So by the time I was 14, I was in the 10th grade, and uh, I was able to be in that. Uh, I was on that radio show for three years, wow. and it was called Don Large's Make Way for Youth, um, and he gave he started giving me solos frequently. And there was another girl um, in the in the uh, choir. Her name was Ursula Walker. Now, Ursula was the premier. She was the girl that was always on TV singing. She had a great, a really great voice, really pretty voice. And, uh, and matter of fact, we were, there was only three, uh, 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 three girls in the whole choir of color. You know, it was sure, me, was much more. Ursula, and a lady, a girl named Carmen Mathis. Sure. Ursula's still with us, and she still lives in Detroit. Carmen Mathis passed away about a year ago. And um, so I would sing a lot, on, and that went on until I was 16. And then when I was, yeah, 16, I, I auditioned for Ted Max Amateur Hour. And Ted Max Amateur Hour was in New York. And so that was like the equivalent today of doing American Idol or The Voice. Right, the equivalent, sure. Yeah. So I did that, and I didn't win first. I came in second. But to me, that was a big deal because two weeks later, Jet wrote an article on me, like a two-page article, and I said, oh my God, how did they even know about me? I felt like, wow. You know, but back then, you know, Jet always publicized us, you know, the people, right. the people of color. They always um, publicized what people were doing, uh, African Americans, no matter whether they were politicians. If somebody was on TV doing the Ed Sullivan show or whatever, they would, at, they would have it listed. It was that last page in the back, and uh, anything that was going on pertaining to our, you know, our race, they right. always wrote about us. Right. It was because I remember um, 
Quincy Jones used to call it the black dispatch. Right. Yeah. You got that news out there. <laughs> and you yeah. were a triple threat, being able to read music, singing, yeah. and also that being was, able to play at that age. That got me on, the, uh, on Don Larger's Make Way for Youth. And then I also um, worked with Barry, I got a chance to um, work with Barry Gordy. This was when he had just written some hits for Jackie Wilson. Okay. And there was no Motown. And he started writing songs for me. Amazing. And he would also come to my dance classes and watch me dance. <laughs> and that's how I, it, it all started for me like that. And then when I was 17, I auditioned for uh, Duke Ellington. And uh, it was this came about through his son, Mercer, okay. Mercer Ellington. And I auditioned for Duke Ellington, and he said, oh, I want you to sing with my band. I want to hear you sing with my band. This was like the, the original legendary you know, band members like the Johnny Hodges and people like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, after he heard me sing with the band, he actually sent, he sent a contract. I got a, we got a contract in the mail at home, and he wanted to sign me for 10 years. 10 years. And so at that age. It, at that age. So what happened was we had a neighbor, uh, Alan Early Jr., who was good friends with my parents. And he was a big fan. He, he was uh, always promoted me, you know. And he read the contract. My mother read the contract. And he right away said, you know what? You're only 17. You're going to need a guardian. You have to right. sign a guardian. And he said, uh, this contract shouldn't be 10 Too years long. because it goes beyond your 21st birthday. You should okay. be able to renegotiate or whatever. So we start changing things around. And, right. and, and Mr. Ellington said, oh, well, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to lock you in early. Yeah, that was like... Um, yeah, that kind of thing. Sure. And, yeah. and about you, Dr. Williams, I know you've also had an illustrious career. Tell us just a bit about how you got started and, and then working with Miles Davis, nonetheless. Well, I can't uh, compare to what Frida mentioned. Her uh, career and beginnings and so forth are fantastic, but I'll uh, try to give you a little bit of insight in regards to how I got started in both music and medicine. I'm from Wilmington, Delaware originally, which is the hometown, incidentally, of our new president, whom uh, uh, our family knew way back when. And another person who is from Wilmington, Delaware, was my trumpet teacher, who was Clifford Brown. Uh, Clifford Brown is a, a legendary trumpeter, for those of you who don't know it. And uh, we played in the same high school band. He was a few years ahead of me. And he taught me some licks and jazz and so forth, and I got interested in it. Uh, so at the age of 14, I joined a uh, big band. I, they, I guess they thought that I was uh, good enough to play. And uh, I, uh, this band got an invitation to play at the Apollo Theater mm. in New York. So at the age of 14, I got a chance to play at the Apollo. We didn't win the competition, but it was just the the experience that we had. At that time, I got uh, intensely interested in going to college and uh, entering into a pre-med program. And fortunately, I got a full scholarship to Harvard University, which I attended at the age of 16. And uh, during that time, I was able to continue my musical uh, career. Uh, but. Uh, of course, my medical studies took priority, and over uh, the course of my college career, I was able to continue playing, and uh, at the uh, uh, invitation of some uh, great musicians like Rassan Roland Kirk, I was able to play on the side uh, in a, uh, a few uh, uh, situations. Uh, during that time, uh, before I finished college, I had the opportunity to meet Miles Davis, and that was a, uh, at a nightclub in Boston, which many of you may know, called The Stables. And Miles kind of took me under his wing, and we became very good friends. Later on, I also became Miles Davis's physician. But uh, during that period of time, uh, he also had a great deal of impact on me and my playing. Uh, as long as I didn't touch his red or his blue horns, I was allowed to come to the house with him in Sicily and, and hang out and play and so forth, and that was a, a great experience. So uh, I am very grateful to be able to 
to have been able to uh, continue my career in medicine and to continue my career in music as well. And I just want to finish by saying that I think it's important in, in these times when we're facing a great deal of te stress and tension, especially from the COVID virus, uh, that people need to understand that music is their balm. It's something that they can reach out to in these times of stress and get a great deal of relief. And so I congratulate you, Dr. Moshe Lewis, on uh, instituting this program, which brings together thoughts about music and the interaction between music and medicine, because that is definitely something that we need these days to try to get us over the hurdles of these difficult times. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Sure. Well, I'm honored and delighted. We were speaking about medicine earlier a little bit as well. You were having some pain in your knee and it continued to progress. How did that unfold? Well, it started years ago, slowly. Uh, 1992, I, was, I had attended the uh, inauguration of Bill Clinton in D.C. And when I was at the airport on my way home, coming home, I noticed walking through the terminal that my left knee, it was a pain, I got a pain, and it was like unusual. And I said, oh God, this hurts, I got it. When I get home, I gotta see a doctor. And I did, uh, someone, a friend of mine who was a doctor referred me to a, a, a regular orthopedic right. surgeon. And he was a sports doctor. He took an x-ray and he said, you have torn and worn and torn and frayed <laughs> cartilage. And he said, how did that? He said, did you have an accident or something? I said, no. He said, well, what could it be? I said, the only thing I've been doing is yoga. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. I had recently started doing advanced yoga. I was mm. advanced because I started doing yoga in 73. Right. And, um, 1973. 1973, <laughs> wow. over 40 years, over 40 years ago. So um, I had been doing the yoga, and what it was because of the extreme knee bending and the, con the continuate, uh, continuous stress on the knees, uh, and, and everybody, I learned that everybody has a different DNA. Everybody's DNA is not the same, and that has a lot to do with it, you know. That's, you know, when you see people who are contortionist and they're like right. uh, they're twisting around like a, <laughs> a rubber band, it's, they've got a different kind of DNA. Right. And uh, it's sort of like my yoga teacher at the time uh, was Bikram, Bikram Chowdhury, the oh, infamous Bikram Chowdhury. Right. It's a very intense. Uh, teach, yeah, right, Tik taught Hatha Yoga. And he could look at you sometimes and tell he, like where you're from or something like that. He, and he, he definitely pointed out uh, you know, the difference between some people as to where they were born. Oh, really? Yeah, the region where they were born, mm. you know, they, it had to do with your race as well, mm. you know. Okay. And, uh, but anyway, like long story short, I started, after a while I started having more pain with my, in my knee. I got arthroscopic surgery in 1992. And then I, uh, I started going to the health food store and I started taking glucosamine sulfate right. with chondroitin. And as, and as the years went by, it got better. You know, of course the knee had the arthroscopic surgery, so it was better. Right. Now my right knee, I noticed that when I was like taking the light jogs around um, a Beverly, you know, Beverly Hills High, they had a, like a track, right. and I noticed that my right knee started to bother me. And you I think said, it was getting jealous? Huh? You think it was getting jealous of the other It was getting jealous of the other day, yeah, like it's got to catch up. And it wasn't for like three or four years before that started happening. So I said, you know what, I'm not going to jump into any surgery. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just stay with the supplements. So I start taking different supplements, like I said, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid, uh, different things. Like even shark cartilage, I took that, although I don't know if that had anything to do with helping me, but I did that. And it, it really helped. It kept it at bay. It kept it at bay. So then finally, about maybe 10 years ago, I started to notice after yoga class that I would, uh, I was starting to get the pains again. It was getting more stressful in my knees. And eventually I had to stop doing a certain certain postures. Right. Certain postures. Imposes. Yeah. And then I realized that um, you know, it was getting to the point where I had to like, you know, when you walk up the stairs and go down the stairs, um, 
I, especially with when I'm working and performing and I was coming from, I had a dressing room that was uh, up a, like a flight of stairs and there was no elevator. And so when I got ready and I had on high heels and I was getting ready to come down the stairs and I noticed that, oh my God, I need some help. Mm, it's trying to get stiff. <laughs> so finally it got to the point where I went to an orthopedic surgeon a different one, and he x-rayed my knee, and he said, you've got severe arthritis in both knees, wow. you know. Uh, and and it, as it turned out, the left knee was the, a, a little worse mm. than the right knee, but he said you, you, he was prescribing um, a total knee replacement for both knees. So I got the left knee done June 17th of last year. Right. And you look amazing, and you're yeah. out here performing and doing great. And so great. I'm not, for some reason, I, I'm i not going to do the, the right knee because I've, I did get uh, stem cell. Mm -hmm. um, I got a stem cell injection. Yeah, and, give them uh, the time to work and yeah. see how that turns out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I continue to take other supplements like Boswella, Bromelain. Uh, glucosamine, you know, sure. all that stuff. Natural approaches. Natural, so hyaluronic acid and stuff and so forth and so on. And I just kind of take it easy. With, now this knee, now that it's got a t titanium in it, it's strong, it's very strong. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it's good, it's very good. And, and I'm thinking, I just have to, sometimes when I'm walking up and down the stairs, I notice that maybe I might feel a little, little twang in here, a little pain, but nothing bad. So I'm just going to continue with my supplements. Good. Now I've, I've and got. And not overdo it on the right. I've got arthritis in my shoulders, oh. both shoulders, okay. and now they're telling me that oh, you need to get a shoulder replacement, total shoulder replacement. I said, well, what is that like? <laughs> right. The same as your knee? <laughs> I said, is it going to leave a scar? They said, yeah. He said, like about here to here, like that. Yeah, it's a, so it's a bigger operation. I li I'd like to jump in uh, at the conclusion of this and just say some things, sort of to wrap things up. Uh, it's so delightful to be able to to participate in an interview with Frida and talk about not only music but all of the surgical things and it, it gives an idea of how we can bring music and medicine together and I would just like to say in conclusion that uh, what we're talking about is something that I look at as being able to perform our music and look at our medicine with what I call surgical precision. And uh, we attempt to, to do that in our playing, and I hope that everybody's enjoyed what Frida has sung today and what we've played together. It's believed and has been shown scientifically that there is a matching, a, uh, a, I guess you might say, a collaboration in the brain between musical patterns and medical thinking and mathematical thinking. So it's not a mistake, it's not a coincidence that people who are doctors, for instance, like Dr. Lewis and like myself, uh, who become interested in music and proficient at it because there are connections in the brain, so to speak, that make that possible. And I'll chime in to say that for all of us, uh, even who may not be in medicine, music winds up being so cathartic, so spiritual, so connecting that many times our emotions and our experiences and things we've been through are allowed to take all types of highs and lows and traverse different calmness, like when we were talking about classical music or more intense things, we were talking about acid rock, um, and be able to have all those experiences that pretty much uh, light up our brain in different ways and really help us feel like we can express ourselves. I also just wanted to finish up with one conclusion about our arthritis because this is something I see every single day. It's very common as we get older that the soft parts of our knee and our shoulders can definitely start to wear down simply because we've gotten a bit older or as you were discussing in your case, the soft tissue from the cartilage and all of the yoga maneuvers may have placed undue strain. Yeah. Pain is not something we should completely ignore when it affects these types of joints, be it our knees, our backs, um, or our shoulders, and we definitely recommend that people see their doctor. Um, that said, the approach you took was excellent, getting supplements and starting with a very natural approach. 
the hyaluronic injections you mentioned also can be used as a natural lubricant. Sometimes surgery winds up being an option, like Dr. Williams was saying, surgical precision, to make sure that we can keep on keeping on as you have done. And so again, delighted to see you up in about less than a year since your surgery, a knee replacement, and you're dancing up the steps. So yeah. delighted to join you for Music and Medicine with Frida Payne and Dr. Richard Allen Williams. Can't wait to see you next time.